Shamai and welcome to my wild Welsh garden. Well as you can see it's been a wet old start to the day here in Wales so I'm in my summer house sheltering from the rain and talking a little bit about weeds. So as I'm setting out on this journey to wild my garden and become a wild gardener um, I've been thinking a lot about exactly what that means and I think for me uh, at the moment it means a change in attitude. Now for most of my gardening life uh, weeds have been frowned upon. As I said before in a previous video that I was brought up in the days of Percy Thrower uh, when you know weeds were, were forbidden. Um, weeds uh, have always been talked about very negatively so weeds are unsightly, uh, they don't look nice, they will compete with your plants for nutrients, for water, for light and your plants will suffer. Weeds will um, harbour pests and then the pests will move on to your plants and eat them. So weeds had to be removed, they had to be weeded out and there were a number of ways that you could do this. You could pull them up, you could dig them up, you could hoe them off and you could poison them with chemicals. And you have to keep on with your weeding otherwise they're going to take over the garden. And I think this view is still quite prevalent amongst conventional gardeners. Last year at the Chelsea Flower Show there was quite a controversy about some of the show gardens that had actually put weeds into their gardens because some people didn't think that they should be there. So it has been difficult but my attitude towards weeds is changing. I'm seeing them in much more of a positive light. Some of them I think look beautiful and many of them are useful to us human beings. They can be used in many different um, natural and herbal remedies for problems that we have. But I think most important for me is that they are so beneficial to wildlife. They provide um, nectar for insects. They provide a, 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 a food plant for, for many insects and for the larval forms of many insects, which in turn provide food for birds and animals uh, that I want to attract into my garden. So I think the future for me lies in having more weeds in my garden and not less. So this year I have hardly done any weeding at all. The weeds haven't taken over the garden. In fact, in a lot of places, I think they look really pretty. So I'll show you a few places in my garden that over the summer have become uh, quite weedy. So outside my back door I've got some pots and these are two uh, pots with aces in. I'm pretty sure this is a speedwell. That seems to have little blue flowers and that one has little white flowers. And uh, I've always considered it a weed and I've always pulled up buckets um, from my allotment before I moved here and from this garden when I arrived here. But this year I thought, do you know, I'm just going to leave it. It's a pretty flower. It's ground cover, cover for creatures. I'm just going to leave it. So this is the flower bed outside my back kitchen door, just at the top of the steps. And uh, as you can see, it, it's just full of plants. Now the only thing, the, the only maintenance that I've done on this little bit has been to cut back the lavender um, because if you don't do that it just gets too big and leggy and, and I've also cut back that perennial wallflower for the same reasons. But other than that I haven't done anything. And you can see there are all sorts of... Um, what can I say, self-seeded plants that could be considered weeds. Um, there's, there's this lovely thing right in the middle of the picture here um, and I actually don't know what it is uh, but it's, it's very pretty. Then there's a Verbena bonariensis there. There are this um, 
annual spurge that uh, pops up places. Um, here's the speed well that I was talking about. Uh, like I say, I normally pull up buckets of this stuff from the um, from the flower beds, and I haven't this year, and it hasn't taken over at all because it's um, got a lot of competition from everything else. This is uh, forget me not. This is a um, sort of alpine hardy geranium, I think, and this is erigeron, Mexican fleabane, and in there are several primroses, which um, will look lovely next spring. And then just behind it is a... I can't think. It's a herb. This is the trouble when you get old. Um, words just disappear. And uh, it's, it's fabulous for, for, for the bees. Oh yes, there's a foxglove just down there and what looks like a dandelion and uh, moss of course if anything is still for longer than five minutes in this garden moss grows on it and then there's a lot of this um, sort of creeping succulent uh, I don't know what it is I got it in um in a collection of six different ones I think from B&Q when I first arrived and it uh, it just loves it here and grows in uh, lots of the nooks and crannies around the place and then down here there's some more erigeron and a wild strawberry but did you spot the um, the one thing that I'm actually going to remove? Yeah, the bramble. Because if I don't take that out, then next year it will be 12 foot long. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just go and get some gloves. Because that's one thing you do need. Pulling up brambles, you need gloves. Okay, so I've dug up the bramble with the help of my trowel and in the process I've also found an aquilegia seedling for you which will probably flower next year and I've also realised I didn't point out the dog violet uh, of which there is a lot here but it kind of disappears in the summer. There, if you look under the rose there, you can see some more. But it's very pretty in the spring with the primroses. And I've also remembered the name of this herb. It's a oregano and uh, provides a lot of um, food for bees. So this is another bed that I've done very little to this uh, this year at all and uh, it's got a number of things growing in it that could be considered weeds. There's the uh, little spurge again and the dog violet and uh, here we've got a little willow herb. It's not the rose bay willow herb, it's just a little one. There's one there and there's one here. Now previous years I would have pulled as many of those up as I could see but this year I haven't bothered and uh, they don't seem to have taken over yet. And then here it in focus. There is a sow thistle and again previously I would never have tolerated a sow thistle in my garden. I would have considered them ugly and horrible. That's what I mean by a sort of change of attitude because it's about seeing that as, as a beautiful plant. 
So anyway, I've uh, trying to get it into focus. I've left it. I haven't got a lot. I haven't got many, but they're dotted around the garden. I mean, I may well rue the day. I may have flower beds just chock a block full of sow thistles next year, um, but we'll see. And then here, now this is really going to test my wild gardening credentials. I'll just pause on the bee. Oh, it's gone. And I've just seen over there that there's um, a willow herb that's, uh, that's seeded. But then even in previous years when I've pulled them up, some of them have always seeded. Um, so we'll see how many willow herbs I get next year. But uh, yeah, so this is really going to test my wild gardening credentials. It's a stinging nestle, nettle, a stinging nettle that's just popped up. So am I going to dig it up or am I going to leave it? So this is another flower border where most things have gone over now. Uh, there's several phloxes, um, a peony, a hardy geraniums. Uh, note to self, uh, plant some later flowering uh, plants so that there's a bit more interest at this time of year. And then down there, as you can see, there is another stinging nettle. But I've actually been thinking about this peony. I think the leaves actually look quite attractive at this time of year, but for the rest of the year, it doesn't really do any favours for wildlife. Uh, the, nothing eats its leaves and it has big blousy flowers that have no nectar or pollen and it actually hasn't flowered for years. So I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm actually thinking of digging up this peony and planting those two uh, stinging nettles in its place. So what do you think of my nettles? The thing is that nettles are the larval food plant of so many lovely butterflies. I can only think it would be beneficial to have some in my garden. But let me know in the comments, should I grasp the nettle and just pull them up or should I grasp the nettle of wild gardening and um, leave them where they are? Or should I dig them up and sort of make, make a, a tidier clump of them where the peony um, is? Uh, let me know what, what you think I should do um, or what you would do in a similar situation or, or what you've done in the past. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. So I do hope you've enjoyed your visit to my Wild Welsh Garden. If you have, then please hit the like button. If you'd like to come again, um, hit the subscribe button and the little bell and YouTube will tell you when I upload another video. Uh, it's still raining, so I'm going to sit here in my summer house and watch the rain. And I'll see you next time. Hoi la matro.